Welcome back. Today we will be continuing Friendly Rivalry. We'll be reading Chapter 3 today. Hope you enjoy. Chapter 3 Izuku had to admit to himself that there was a reason he hadn't told his mom he was volunteering at a retirement home for reformed supervillains. She'd probably ban him from doing it, and this was really his only option. He'd do anything to get into UA and become a hero, and if it meant hiding a bit of information from his mom, he'd do it. He just said he was going to hang out with friends to explain it away to his mom. She was delighted to hear that, of course, and Izuku dreaded the time she asked him to bring them home. At least he didn't have to fake his cheer when he got home. He was really happy, and it probably showed. If the way his mom burst into a te happy tears as soon as he got home was any indication, it did show. Izuku, of course, started crying too, but they had always been sympathetic criers. Izuku hadn't wanted to fall behind in anything, so he'd left Wednesday as an open homework day. He was almost dreading it now, fearing that he would go back to the home on Thursday and find it had all been a dream. For now, he'd just have to focus on the now, which was Tuesday. Just as he'd been leaving, Tenki had stopped him, asking to see any notebooks Izuku had. Izuku had been surprised. Tenki had guessed that he had notebooks, but agreed. They didn't seem like the type to destroy his notebooks, but he didn't pack the notebook he had on them anyway. I'm so glad your friends are taking interest in your hobbies. His mother cried upon seeing his backpack. Y yeah, Izuku muttered, adjusting his backpack. They're all excited to see my notes. Inko cried further, and Izuku quickly left, not willing to cry and be late. When he got in there, only Tenki was in the main room waiting for him. Izuku waved timidly before sitting down across from him at the table. I assume you brought the notebooks, Tenki asked, looking rather amused. Izuku nodded quickly, pushing his backpack up onto the table and opening it. He'd brought the pouch and the gloves, just in case he'd be practicing with Hiki again. Maybe she could show him how to put on the pouch again. He hadn't managed to do it on his own yet, if she didn't mind, of course. He pulled the notebooks out of his backpack, stacking them in numerical order, 1 to 10, with the one on the villain's number 11. But he just had 1 to 10 here. Tenki plucked the first one off the top, opening it and scanning it. Izuku straightened the pearl nervously. Tenki! Just, just Zun. It was Zun, said, coming over to glare at Tenki. Why didn't you tell us he arrived? He just got here, Tenki replied dryly. I haven't had the time. Zun eyed him suspiciously, but shrugged, dropping it easily. That's a lot of notebooks you got there, kid, she said teasingly, nudging Izuku. Izuku blushed. It's a lot of information, Tenki said, turning a page. We are so going to design a code or two for you. This would be dangerous in the wrong hands. Zun looked over his shoulder. Geez, kid, most professional analysis people aren't half as good, and they train for years. She straightened, stretching. I'm going to go tell everyone you're here. I'd be super hypocritical if I didn't. It's really nothing special, Izuku tried to protest. Tenki gave him 
A very unimpressed eyebrow rings. I've been alive for nearly a century, child. I bet if you gave an analysis like this to a pro hero anonymously, they'd think you were a retired pro hero or professional analysis. Hiki entered the room, coming to look over Tenki's shoulder. He's right, fledgling. If you ever decide heroics aren't for you, you have a very promising career as an analyst open to you. Tenki already mentioned a code, right? Yeah, Izuku said curiously. Hiki picked up one of the other notebooks, opening it and flipping through it quickly. You're going to need it. If this gets into a villain's hands, it could be very dangerous. If villains even caught wind of this, you'd be quite the target. Be careful who you show these to, Kurai said, sort of appearing out of the shadows. Izuku jumped at his appearance. Kurai flipped through a notebook Izuku hadn't seen him grab. Villains aren't the only ones you have to look out for if your skill for analysis got out. Izuku blinked in confusion at him. What? While the fact you don't actually have a quirk will be a huge benefit to you in this situation, Tenki said, putting the notebooks down in favor of lacing his fingers together in front of his face. It's still dangerous to you. A good section of the people here became supervillains because they saw no other way to change the world. Almost everyone here will have experienced bullying at the least, harassment, and outright abuse at the worst, just because of their quirks. Izuku had known quirk discrimination was a thing, but it was something completely different to see it up close. He'd experienced quirkless discrimination, but he knew it was a whole other ball game to quirk discrimination. The dangerous nature of my quirk when I was a kid caused a lot of accidents where my quirk went off and injured many people. I got control of it as I got older and trained more, but the stigma followed me. So I made the best of it. They wanted danger, they got danger. Shadows are traditionally associated with darkness, with villains. They saw a villain, they got a villain, Karai said, a deep frown marring his face. Izuku sucked in a deep breath. Understand, child, Tenki said calmly. What you see as heroic because you can see the innate heroic potential a quirk has is not always seen by society. My quirk, all for one, can give and take quirks. Tenki took a deep breath and looked Izuku in the eyes. Izuku stared back. Just because my quirk has a normal potential to allow people unhappy with their quirks, or those who bodies are ill-suited for their quirks, or even providing a quirkless people with a chance to be seen as human, given the courtesy they should have even without a quirk, doesn't mean that's what it's seen as. Izuku understood. People saw stigma, saw only a chance at their quirk, the thing most defined themselves by to be taken away. Stuff like that is technically illegal, Hiki said, sighing, but it's never enforced. Our, our society runs on there always being more villains to fight. Almost all villains, small time or not, were forced into the dark due to something or another. Some got out, most stayed, too embroiled in the underground to ever emerge. You guys got out, Izuku said hesitantly. Kurai shrugged. 
Part of you never leaves the dark. Don't dabble in it, kid. Don't even dip your metaphorical toe in it. Underground Heroics toes the line between hero, vigilante, and villain. Heroes there have to be very careful lest they go undercover and never come out. This is not intending to scare you, Tenki said quickly, reaching across to put his hand on Izuku's shoulder, no matter how much it seems that way. Izuku nodded cautiously, his brain running a mile a minute. Although, do remember, kid, Hiki said, setting the notebook she'd been reading back on the table as well. Not all above-ground heroes are as noble as some underground heroes can be. Endeavor and Eraserhead, for example, Tenki said, smiling slightly. Eraserhead is a very good hero, although it is rare indeed to find people who know of him. He takes care of villains swiftly and with care, unless they are of a very specific Subtype. They will often come in basically or entirely uninjured. And Endeavor has the highest villain and civilian casualty rate of the top heroes, Izuku finished, knowing full well the stats the number two hero had. Tenki inclined his head. Exactly. What's the subtype you mentioned? Izuku asked after a moment. He was genuinely curious. He hadn't seen any videos of Eraserhead using more force than was perhaps strictly necessary. Anything having to do with the violations of human rights, Kiki answered for Tenki. Human traffickers, child abusers, kidnappers, that kind, she shrugged. Honestly, I don't blame him for being rough with them. I may have been a very good super villain in my time, but I at least I have morals. You almost got the serial killer designation for murdering rapists and pedophiles, Karai said, pointing at her. Don't play innocent. We've all heard the tales. Hiki shrugged again, completely unrepentant. They all deserved it. Any traffickers and abusers didn't even get my attention. I just got minions to herd them near my fights and I killed them in collateral damage. Which is why you had such a high civilian death rate for a reformed villain, Izuku said quickly, eager to show his knowledge. Bingo, she gave him finger guns. They also all deserved it. Tenki chuckled. You'll find that most of the reformed villains here are, or were like that. They had morals and stuck to them. That's why we reformed, Hiki agreed, laughing. Although, Ningyami went ahead and reformed herself for her kid. So, she doesn't count. She counts plenty, Karai argued. Reforming and retiring for her son definitely shows some degree of morals. She has the lowest civilian death rate among all of you, Izuku volunteered, immediately shrinking into his seat when they looked at him. Very good, Tenki praised calmly. Would you prefer if we got started on a code right now, or did something else? Izuku considered that a code would probably be more useful right now. So, he'd do that. He wouldn't risk doing something else in case they realized how useless and helpless and weak he was. Codes, if you don't m mind. Tenki stared at him evenly for a long moment, and Izuku shifted awkwardly. Alright, if you cannot break the muttering habit, we'll find a language for you to learn so those around you who don't understand you... Well, it won't work on polygot quirks. I'm sure we can find a language no one knows anymore. It's a layer of security if you are incapable of breaking the habit. 
Izuku nodded hesitantly. He had learned what he could while they still thought he was useful. While they didn't consider him something to be kept in a plastic container and kept safe from the world because he was useless, weak, helpless, and couldn't protect himself. He'd resolved to learn as quickly as possible so he could learn more the limited time he had.